Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 29th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever since uh, the attack of Russia against uh, Ukraine in February, one feature that has become very popular on social media are various uh, drone footage videos and such, usually uh, showing uh, some of the battles in Ukraine. Now, what I've lately observed in particular on Twitter is that uh, there are certain actors that are using uh, these videos to push scarier. I don't call them mal because I'm not 100% sure if they are actually malicious. Some of them are certainly not sort of obviously malicious. But what happens is when you're clicking on what you think is the video, you're being really redirected to a different website. The website itself doesn't actually have any obvious ads, but you'll see pop-ups alerting you of your device being infected. And then you're being redirected to software that supposedly helps you fix the problem. Now on iOS, what I see is a lot of VPN applications being advertised that way. Uh, these are legitimate, if you want to call them, because they're in the iOS app store. Uh, but of course, I wouldn't really trust an application that is uh, advertised uh, using that false pretense. If I'm visiting the same website uh, using my uh, desktop, a laptop, a Mac, then usually I'm being advertised uh, Mac Keeper, which is sort of a cleanup software uh, for the Mac. Again, probably wouldn't trust it if it's being advertised using false claims that your system is infected. I've also seen McAfee antivirus being advertised that way. So typically these are sort of some referral deals uh, where uh, the website sending you to the uh, McAfee website is getting some cut uh, for making you buy their software. In particular with McAfee, I've reported uh, them in the past uh, to McAfee, hoping that they wouldn't really approve of uh, this behavior of uh, their affiliates. Uh, so far, I haven't really seen it make a difference. And I got sort of what I would consider a catch-up story from last week. Uh, the story actually came out uh, just sort of uh, at the beginning of uh, last week, and that's about uh, Google making some subtle changes to how Google Maps works. And you may not have even noticed that. It used to be that uh, Google Maps was located at maps.google. Dot com. Google recently changed that to now be located at google.com slash map. So what's the difference and why are we talking about it here? Well, uh, there is an important difference between these uh, two URLs and that's the same origin or the origin of the particular uh, web page. The origin of a web page is essentially the protocol, the host name and the port. So with maps.google.com, the origin is different than the rest of Google at google.com, but with google.com slash maps, uh, you now have the same origin for Google's main property, google.com and the Google Maps page. This is important because you may be tempted to give Google Maps access to your location in your browser. After all, that's something that you often need. But since Google Maps is now well, the same origin as google.com, you are implicitly giving all of Google access to your location in your browser if you're giving Google Maps access to your location. So this is probably a change that was also made in response to browsers becoming more picky and what uh, cookies they're allowing and such. Also, some of these cross-origin cookies are no longer uh, that well accepted by browsers. So be aware, if you are giving Google Maps access to your location, you really give all of Google.com access to your location. And Acre fixed a couple of vulnerabilities in the UFI bias for a few of its laptops. Uh, the vulnerabilities do essentially allow for a secure boot bypass, so someone would be able to essentially implant malware into the computer's firmware, something you definitely do want to uh, take care of, in particular if you travel frequently with your laptop. These vulnerabilities uh, were found by 
researchers with ESET security. And sticking with firmware here for a second story, Binary took a look at the different OpenSL versions in a UEFI firmware images. And well, you would think that for something like firmware where things have to be tight and small, you would have only a limited number of sort of libraries that are being used. Well, uh, they actually found three different versions of OpenSSL uh, being used in the image that they investigated. And uh, to top it all off, uh, the most recent version that was actually used here was 102J, which was released in 2018 and certainly is no longer up to date or supported. They looked at uh, firmware from Lenovo, Dell, HP, uh, different uh, versions there, and uh, then basically enumerated the different OpenSL versions that they found. And well, uh, yeah, it sort of overall was all over the place. Uh, some of them at least had a more recent version, like uh, you know, one of the 1.1.1 1 .1 .1, uh, versions of OpenSL, but that's always an addition to some of uh, the older versions as well. And apparently one of the reasons behind this is that uh, UEFI uh, bias firmware is uh, typically uh, not sort of created by one entity, uh, but uh, more or less uh, cobbled together as so often in software from various binary blobs that are contributed uh, by various companies. And of course, that's sort of how you end up uh, with uh, these different versions of OpenSL. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again uh, tomorrow. And again, remember, let others know about this podcast, the spread the word. Uh, I'm doing them because, well, uh, people are listening. Thanks and bye.